man, what a feeling. Next chapter of life just started. After uh, seven years in the uh, popular ski town of Breckenridge, Colorado, up in the mountains, I spent four days shy of two years back in my hometown, uh, industrial city uh, in the Midwest of Wichita, Kansas. Dramatically different locations. And, you know, it's been great to be back around friends and family, but the plan was not to be there for two years. I came home out of debt with a couple grand in the bank. Now I'm about 13, 14 G's in the hole with a new engine, but uh, I'm also a whole lot healthier. I've got direction, passion, um, you know, a mission, a goal. And, uh, man, it's just a good, a good feeling to have uh, worked hard to get myself healthy, to focus on really figure out what I'm going to do with this life. You know, I graduated college 18 years ago and spent four years, yeah, four years pursuing my direction that I spent uh, all my time in college leading up to. So I spent four years in that career, realized pretty soon that I did not want to do that as a career working for others, which was video production. Then I spent another four years building a business, had huge potential. I had over 30,000 rental units, uh, partnered up with the brokerage. We had 42 agents, uh, was doing some really innovative things a decade ahead of their time or more. People haven't even caught up with what I was doing then. And I, I literally know how to make the phone ring off the hook in the real estate industry. But I learned that's not how I want to trade my hours for dollars. It's not how I want to spend my life. Um, went off to Breckenridge, Colorado for seven years, promptly got hurt and uh, really kind of messed up my mission on producing snowboarding videos and building that life out there. Um, you know, the town of uh, the community of Summit County, which included Breckenridge, Keystone, Arapaho Basin, and Copper Mountain Ski Slopes. It was almost impossible to find a rental or to buy a home there when I moved out there. But after uh, after that 2020 COVID, funny money flooded the market. You know, my hypothesis is that PPP money, that uh, a lot of small business owners with payroll that were sitting pretty, a little creative accounting, and all of a sudden, now they've got themselves an Airbnb and nobody who actually lived there had a place to reside anymore. Um, so came home for a little while, helped a few friends' businesses out, engine went out and uh, really developed my, my mission a lot further. Um, if you've seen any of the past videos, the, the mission is adventure, kindness, and wellness and the pursuit of those. This is a pretty big adventure. You know, this is round three of Nomad Life. First time was in a $500 van. Second time was in this vehicle. It wasn't really properly prepared. It wasn't really properly packed. I made it for three months the first time around, four months the second time around. And this time I'm sure hoping to go a lot longer than that. Unless something just huge happens and allows me to evolve to the next phases. We'll talk more about that later. But right now I'm on my way down to from Wichita, Kansas to a suburb of Tulsa, Oklahoma to visit family for a night, to see my cousin um, on his birthday. You know, not the most adventurous, exciting part of the trip, but I want to make sure that I, I come and say hi to the family. Uh, you know, they, they've been real supportive of my, my uh, marriage that lasted about five years. You know, I guess that's the way they go these days, and I've been really loving the single life allowed me to start developing my own mission and goals in life without having to take anybody else into consideration. It's also made it, I think, a lot easier to get healthy, eat right, um, dedicate the time I need to go to the gym, whether it's getting up at 4 a.m. or going in at 1 a.m. Um, you know, I got real serious about working out. Uh, nutrition has gotten better. Um, 18 days since my last beer now, uh, or alcoholic beverage. And the mission is 
once I cross the border to New Mexico, um, you know, I'll be New Mexico, Arizona, California, uh, where there is legalized cannabis. Uh, so no alcohol for at least six months after I cross that border, but I'm 18 days in now and I don't have any real craving or desire to put any more of that poison into my body. So I might've already started on my six month mission and I'm sure it'll keep going after that, but it's really nice to just have a, a finite, somewhat challenging goal. That way, you know, I know I'm not going to slip up if I say, oh, you know, hey, it's three more months versus if I say never again, it seems to be a little bit easier to slip up. And once you slip up, it's out the window and, you know, lose lose faith in your own ability or losing faith in mine. But uh, part of this part of this mission of wellness and kindness, really kindness to myself and probably to others, is to remove the most uh, physically and spiritually damaging item I was consuming from my life altogether. You know, I, I hope that along this mission, I can inspire some other people, you know, I mean, to, to be adventurous, to be kind, to be well and healthy. Uh, and maybe if you see, you know, you're concerned that you're drinking a little bit too much or you know that you are and you haven't quite been able to get it out of your, your life or your system, I hope to show you guys some of the positive elements that come into my life as I save money as I keep worthless, completely worthless, empty calories out of my system, um, you know, while I find more, uh, more fulfilling and wholesome ways and places and people to spend my time around, um, you know, just 18 days into this trek of sobriety, it, it's really kind of a, uh, you know, it's, it's a good feeling. I, I, I have noticed how much more productive I've been. You have no idea what it's taken to get ready for this trip. To do it completely right. To have every single thing fixed up in the right place, in order. Um, you probably heard me say it a few times. Put in a brand new motor into this vehicle. It has a 100,000 mile warranty. I had a shop install it. Had everything done right with the expensive credit card fees they had to charge for using stripe or whatever it was cost me almost exactly ten thousand dollars um you know i had I put brand new tires on the car changed all the fluids throughout the entire drivetrain i did a lot of that myself the transmission was there's a lot to that the price was 264 dollars just the cost of the parts and the fluid was going to be 100 bucks so 160 dollars 164 dollars to have to take that off my shoulders was well worth it and I'm really glad I did because instead of three or four hours, it took them three days. Uh, they broke multiple parts. They had all kinds of problems. We were going to do it under a buddy's big industrial forklift out in the gravel outdoors. And I have a feeling I would have broken the same stuff they did. And it probably would have taken me a week or two. You know, maybe I'd still be working on it. So thank goodness I paid somebody else to take that one off my shoulders because I, I can tell that it's a bit of a, you know, would it have been possible? Yes. Did I need that time to do other stuff to prepare for this trip? Absolutely. Was I able to pick up some extra shifts at work and put some more cash in my pocket because I wasn't working on the truck? Yep. So I think I came out ahead on that one. Same way with front axle seals. Uh, paid a shop just a little under $500 to do that one. Uh, they took about four hours on that one. You know, probably would have taken me two days. Um, again, we probably would have had it on a, you know, buddy's forklift or... You know, maybe in my maybe in my family's garage up on jack stands. Uh, it just it was it was worth it to go ahead and pay somebody else to take care of that one. Um, what else do we do? So yeah, um, both differentials have gotten it. I did the rear differential transfer case, um, changed the struts on the top box. Let's see, I uh, man, I don't know. The list goes on and on. But, uh, it, I mean, I literally spent the last couple months preparing for this. Really, ever since the engine broke, um, you know, I built a new bed for the rear, gutted the interior, put in a uh, office seat, made it really, really purpose-built. It's just been, you know, it's it's been a bit of a trek, but I'm so glad that it's all, I've got everything done. I mean, I got everything in order, and it wasn't until 
yesterday when I knew for sure I had all the mechanical stuff completely dialed in, everything I needed to get done, everything I needed to build, fabricate, have friends help with, have shops help with, was all finished. So, you know, the engine's only got a few thousand miles on it now. The vehicle's still got 175. I've got an entire box full of tools. I've got a AAA membership. Um, and by the way, if I don't have my affiliate link set up for that yet, I will soon. That has been one of the absolute best investments of my life. AAA roadside assistance. They give you up to a hundred mile tow. If you break down, no questions asked. I think you get like six of those in a year. Um, and it just, it's one of the best insurance policies you can get. It's, a, it's not insurance, but it is, you know. Um, and I think it's about $50 a year. So AAA insurance, uh, roadside assistance super awesome got set up with Affleck injury insurance on top of my regular health insurance um, you know I just I wanted to have all this set up and dialed in and have every concern uh, covered so I know this is just a long ramble again these these I don't even know if this counts as a podcast this is me just kind of chatting with you but I'm just so excited to be on the road and I wanted to get a little bit of content as I get going you know I do have a handful of followers that are probably watch this um, and, you know, in two, three, five years, when I've got a whole lot more, some of these videos at the beginning of the mission will be pretty interesting, I think, to the dedicated followers. So, after I head down to Tulsa, I'm going to shoot over to Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, there's the world's largest hot air balloon festival going on. I'm going to get out the DSLR and get a bunch of amazing footage of that. I'll be up at sunset, you know, another or sunrise. Another nice thing about uh, sobriety is I've been getting good sleep and I can wake up feeling good, being productive, ready to rock, ready to get my video footage. Um, you know, I, last weekend I went on a little mini shakedown uh, to the Big Iron Overland uh, rally at this, and it's around a historical site called Big Brutus, the world's second largest electric bulldozer. I think I think it's something like that. It's a huge bulldozer, and there was hundreds of overland vehicles like mine. Everybody's, you know customized to their own specs and dreams. It was super awesome. Next day, I went out to Red Bull Imagination. Make sure to look that up. Google that. Go to YouTube, Red Bull Imagination. I'll have videos of both of these up real soon, uh, but it's going to take me a little while to get those edits together. Uh, that is the biggest, baddest, wildest, craziest freestyle motocross event in the world by far. What a cool thing to go check out. You know, that was always my inspiration since a child. Um, you know, Crusty Demons of Dirt, Terra Firma, I had so many of these VHSs, they were about $30 after tax. I was making $5 an hour working my ass off, you know, full week worth of part-time work as a kid just to trade trade that time for one VHS if they got watched over and over dozens, maybe hundreds of times. And to be able to go and be just right next to the best riders in the world, to Robbie Gordon, um, to Twitch, to, to old schoolers and new schoolers, uh, it was pretty dang cool seeing me watching these bikes do 200-foot long jumps, seeing Four of your favorite riders in the air all at the same time crisscrossing paths in the air so i've got uh, footage of that coming up pretty soon it's really you know kind of a bucket list item i didn't know i had on the list and i saw it was coming up and it was like boom and it happened the same weekend as big iron and it was an hour apart like boom boom let's start making content now so man it was a great feeling getting there i sat down that night after shooting videos at big iron and uh I just spent a couple hours transferring footage and, and building projects, and getting ready to start editing. And I realized I've got my office chair back there. I've got my bed back there. I've got all my electronics set up. I've got my laptop computer. I've got all the camera equipment I need. This is not just some little whim that I'm on, or I just kind of like making some videos and I kind of have a truck that I made work. Like this is a very deliberate and intentional situation that I've been developing for years and you know, it really sucks that I had to spend all that money on the motor. But at that point, I was like, you know, in for a penny, in for a pound. I'm going to spend that money. I'm just going to go all in. I know this is what I want to do with my life. I'm a professional video producer by trade. I've been a storyteller since I was young. I'm just so stoked that this is all falling into place. And now, after Tulsa, I'm heading over to Albuquerque. Then I'm heading over to do a little bit of overlanding out around Sedona. Uh, I've got my buddy Alec, who is in all my older adventure videos that we did all those really awesome snowboarding videos with. You know, he, he would make podium and big air competitions. Super good friend. You know, I'm sure we'll be homies until the end of time. Um, I'm going to meet with his brother, who is just an amazing entrepreneur. Uh, he's been doing amazing things since high school. 
and we're going to work on his SEO a little bit and hang out and check out uh, Scottsdale. Um, so we'll be out, at, out doing the overlanding in Sedona, heading to Scottsdale. And then after I chill with him for a day or two, I want to zoom over to Palm Springs. I've already got a job waiting tables lined up. You know, it's kind of funny to be 41 with a degree, handing food to people for tips, but it makes this life so possible. It gives me the freedom I want. It puts good money in my pocket. Um, you know, out on the West Coast, California, it's 15 50 an hour, 16 an hour, whatever, minimum wage plus tips out there instead of $2 an hour plus tips in Kansas. And by the way, when I worked out in Breckenridge, Colorado for the last seven years, mostly on tip jobs, there is not a single state in the United States of America that tips worse than Kansas. So not only do they pay their tipped employees $2.13 an hour, but you're lucky if you get 10 cents or 10% tip. A lot of people just don't feel it's necessary. They'd rather have you work for $2 an hour and then have you tipping out your busters and your bartenders. So you're basically paying them. So for anybody who is young and looking for some, some freedom, you know, waiting tables is a great, easy job. You go and you do your job, you leave, you clock out, no big deal, no stress. Don't even think about it for a second after work. And if you get somewhere that doesn't have that ridiculous $2 an hour minimum wage, get away from the Midwest, get away from the South, do something like I'm doing, get away from paying rent. You know, I'm going to bare minimum on a bad day be making $30 an hour, bare minimum. I'll be making more than that on most days, I'm sure. Um, so, you know, waiting tables, it's actually not too bad. I, I had more fun doing that than doing career jobs. And I don't go home losing sleep. I don't get overworked, you know, 60, 80 hours a week on salary, not getting paid for any of it. Um, you know, I'm going to get paid for the work I do. I just always show up on time and I work good with people and I just don't care, man. When I'm waiting tables, I, I know I'm there to make money. Uh, I'm, I've got a persona. I put on a character for people. I just go and make my money and then I clock out and leave. The second I walk out that door, I'm not thinking about anything. If somebody gets pissed off. I mean, they never do. I'm super awesome with people. You know, it's, I'm perfecting my craft of working with people because I know some days I'm, someday I'm going to be closing some big deals in different ways. So if somebody's upset, I find that is a, a wonderful opportunity to hone my skills. You know, I don't ever explain things. I don't even apologize. I just, I, you know, I figure out what it's going to do to make it better. Usually I end up getting tipped better than if I probably would have if they didn't get upset. So, you know, I utilize opportunities like that. I hope you do too. If you, you know, in whatever capacity you're working with people or whatever capacity you're working with to develop those skills that you're going to be able to utilize later in life to do more valuable things. So when we land after, after um, Scottsdale, maybe check out Phoenix and then I'm going to zoom over to Palm Springs, which is the, you know, that's, that's supposed to be the final destination for the winter, but it's still up in the air. If an opportunity comes up, something sounds fun, looks cool, provides the opportunity to stack some cash and really move the mission forward of building this, this brand of adventure, kindness, wellness, and everything that's going to go along with it then I have the ability to go on and do that. You know, I'll make sure not to burn the bridge with my employer there. Um, but a lot of times when you put in your notice at a job waiting tables, they just tell you, hey, you know, it's good to go. You can you can take off because they don't want to have undedicated employees coming in there. You know, I don't burn bridges on my way out. I always finish out. You know, I put in my two weeks and I, I finish it out even if the job sucks. Um, if for some reason I get there and things aren't lined up with the, uh, the waiting tables job like I thought they were, you know, I'll go to a temp agency. I'll I'll go out for a couple of days and I'll pick up garbage with uh, with felons and make my you know California minimum wage just to keep cash flow. Just it's just what you got to do. You know, it's not the end of the world. Oh well, it sucks for a day. Who cares? Uh, you know, I I think I've never had anybody, any of my friends or family or people really look at this and be like, dude, are you crazy? You've got a degree. Why don't you have your fancy title? Why don't you have your four hundred one k going? You know. My mission is to get away from trading hours for dollars. Uh, mission is to buy land, hopefully with cash, but purchase land and then build a modest home on it myself. Probably buy an unfinished casita, you know, 16 by 30 feet with a loft and finish it out myself. And then I can add on to it later. But I don't want to spend 30 years in debt paying interest while my hours keep generating a diminishing amount of spying power you can't do the same thing today that our parents did or our grandparents did and get the same result so you know what do i want to do do i want to go back to school and spend more opportunity costs not making money spend more time more money just to get more education just to work in a field in white collar environment that i don't even want to be in in the first place trading more hours for dollars 
it doesn't make any sense. Um, you know, the, the thing is, I've found, seek out the outcome and find the path to get there. Stop trying to figure out how to let other people tell you what to do to trade your time for money and trade your money for other stuff because life is short and it's really easy to use up your entire life trading hours for dollars just to benefit somebody else you come out barely with anything in your hand so i'm going to keep living my life you know i i spent too much time out in the mountains in all honesty i should have bailed out of there five years seven years was too long um, i don't miss it i mean i've I miss some things, and, and I guess compared to the way I would spend my time in Wichita, I do, because in the mountains I could go out, I could go hiking, I could go biking, I could go snowboarding, I could go drive, I could sit on the side of the lake, you know, I could go sit down and smoke a joint if I wanted to, whatever, no big deal. Um, you know, back at home, everybody was just unhealthy and angry. Um, the politics were so prevalent everywhere, you know, even though there's nothing you can do while you're yelling about politics and listening to people in their echo chambers saying the same stuff over and over again you know okay well you got you can make a difference for five or ten minutes when you go vote until then my time and my energy are way too valuable to waste on those conversations i got bigger to fish to fry in this life um, so i'm glad to get away from that because it really was depressing every time i'd go to the grocery store just it just see huge, huge people. Everybody was so overweight, just waddling around, packages full of packaged preserved fake food. You know, this, this stuff of microplastics is just, oh, I don't, I don't understand. Uh, and, you know, I came from the least obese, most physically active, most healthy state. And, I'm, you know, that's the life that I want to live. I want to be healthy. I want to be active. I want to, uh, you know, consume natural foods the most that I can. I stay away from from uh, you know, all kinds of junk. The cleaner, the better. And even now, I'm on the road, and I've got road trip snacks. It's beef jerky. It isn't great, but I mean, it's lean, pure protein. It's it's processed and preserved, but it's a hell of a lot better than Doritos and gummy bears. Um, so, why Palm Springs? Well, you know, I was ready for some palm trees in my life. I like the dry, arid climate. Um, I know. Going further to the west, things are densely populated. I think there's a lot more of a challenge with van life, vagabond life. I think it's a lot harder to find places to sleep. I'm, I've got an amazing four-wheel drive vehicle with a lift, with tires. Um, it's made to go off-road. And being inland just a little ways, there's national parks in every direction. There's off-road trails in every direction. It's a far less densely populated area. There's overnight parking in town. I don't want to be spending the night in gyms and Walmarts. If I have to, I'm sure it'll be a little bit easier there than in LA or San Diego, but I'm only about an hour and a half away from LA or San Diego. So you guarantee I'm going to be out there. I'm going to, I'm going to be exploring the West coast. I'm going to be having fun. I've got some friends out there. Um, you know, it's, it's close. I've got my snowboard up on top. I work close to big bear. We're close to Joshua tree national park. So I think there's going to be a lot of places for me to be able to park and camp and sleep and go explore off-road. I've got a really cool part of this mission, which I wasn't able to prepare for yet. I'm gonna to have to spend five or 600 bucks to bring that to fruition. So it's a big part on the wellness part. And I haven't seen anybody doing anything like this. I hope not to give it away. Hopefully you don't figure it out already, but uh, you know, I will be out in nature a lot, doing a lot of fun, physically active things out there. And I really think that this environment will be good for different tip jobs. The cannabis industry is prevalent. You know, LA only has two cannabis lounges where you can actually consume there. Uh, Palm Springs, I think the metro area is 300,000. I'll have to double check that, that stat. But I think it's only 300,000 and they've got 10 cannabis lounges right now. Uh, you know, I did work in that industry up in the mountains. I've found that to be far less physically and spiritually diminishing than alcohol. And I'd much rather be in that environment earning tips than in a heavy drinking environment earning tips. But this is a tourist town with a lot of money. Uh, again, minimum wage for serving jobs, for tip jobs on the West Coast is minimum wage is, you know, I think ranging from 13 to $16 an hour up and down the coast. There's none of this extra low pay for servers and bartenders and butt tenders out there. So I'll be getting an 
almost livable minimum wage if you consider not paying rent because of how I'm living. Then I'll be getting good tips from people who actually have money, who understand how to tip properly and who do appreciate good service from somebody who has developed a real professional aptitude and craft in handling these serving situations. Now, is my goal to serve people? No, but it is what I've found to be the most conducive to the freedom I need and to be able to put cash in my pocket quick and allow me to move around and do what I want to do with my life. So I think this is going to be a great place to earn money in a good amount of money that's going to allow me to work, you know, 30 hours a week or less and really focus on creating content because the mission is turning this channel and this brand into something that is self-sustainable and growable that I don't have to depend on anybody else for my livelihood forever after this. You know, I'm willing to put two to five years into this or I'm willing to put in whatever it takes. I'm expecting two to five years. It could happen a lot sooner, but I'm not, I'm not hoping to just have things blow up and hit it big. I know that I've still got a lot of growth and development here. Even though I'm a professional video producer by trade, uh, you know, being an influencer, being a content creator on YouTube, uh, you know, working my way into shorts and reels, it's a lot different than what I'm used to shooting for the History Channel or editing government or corporate training videos. Uh, and, you know, I think I've gotten pretty good and I've moved my pace forward a lot more and I really watch with a critical eye to understand the people who I enjoy watching who are doing well and I see them growing, trying to understand their business model, understand their pace, understand everything. It, it really is to me exciting because I get to take a set of skills that I already have really perfected and then throw a lot of that out the window and start over and even have fun really dumbing things down, making them easier, not worrying so much about lighting. I don't even know what my framing looks like on this shot right now. I've got my back camera facing me so I can have the wide angle so you can see a little bit more of what's going on in here. Um, you know, audio, this thing is overdriven. It doesn't have much dynamics, but it's, you can tell what I'm saying. I really am just, you know, excited to take the skills that I've developed and take the aptitudes that I've got and the instincts that I've, that I have, and I've developed and craft them into this brand, which I have so many big, awesome ideas for. And in the end of all this, you know, my hope and goal is to, Oh, am I getting Oh, hang on, I got family calling. I'm gonna have to put this on hold. All right, let's pick up where we left off. So in the end of all this, you know, my, my hope is to one, be self-sufficient, self-sustaining, and reliant on nobody else but myself and my work to be able to keep my livelihood going, you know, whether the economy is good or bad. And I think the creator economy can do that. I want to own land in a home outright, uh, a home that I build. And uh, I'm make sure there's a cop pulled over up here. So a home that I build with my own hands for the most part. And uh, then, you know, the, the other real goal is to encourage, inspire others to the other goal is to encourage and inspire others to try to really understand what they actually want to do for themselves with their lives and figure out what the path is to pursue that and achieve that regardless of what direction, what job title, what career field they think they want to be in or wanted to be in, you know, find what is the outcome they want to produce. And then I want it to to lead by example and encourage others to be kind to one another, to find unity with our neighbors, to respect our differences, to be willing to listen to what other people have to say, to be willing to consider it, not have to subscribe to it. But even if you disagree, still find that, you know, we're, we're all neighbors, we're all in this together. And I want to show that, um, you know, how we live our lives physically and mentally can really have a big impact. You know, the, the things that we put into our body, you, you are what you eat. Um, you know, I've only been on this, this fitness and wellness kick for a little under two years. And, you know, it's definitely a night and day difference uh, for me. 
but I really want to encourage people to live a life that is fulfilling where they are achieving things that are challenging and you find that fulfillment through overcoming challenges by sticking with promises you make to yourself. Make sure that's not a cop behind me either. So now I got the light following my eye. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, uh, you know, truthfully, just living a life that uh, is closer to what nature intended us to, getting away from so much synthetic uh, food, synthetic entertainment, synthetic dopamine, um, you know, intoxicants, and just finding some true joy in life versus seeking out temporary pleasure. This is a mission of path I'm still on. I'm still growing and developing. I have by no means reached a point of enlightenment. I think I have some some pretty good perspective here that I've earned through through time and experience and uh, some challenges. But you know, in the end, I want to have a positive impact on the world and find bigger and better, more impactful ways to do that. And man, one of the real big dreams would be that if I could somehow find a model, build a model to where I could provide free, clean, renewable energy to poor communities where that could really have an impact. Um, You know, that would be a really awesome dream and goal too. So thank you guys for coming along on this uh, journey with me. You know, uh, we're getting into some kind of crappy weather now. If you can't hear the the wind chills, wiper scraping and the rain, Uh, but I'm going to go off, hang out with some family. I think it's about time for me to uh, get into a podcast or two on the road trip today. Uh, make sure to check the links below this video. If I don't have it set up yet, it's coming real soon. Uh, you can get a couple months of free trial of Audible through my uh, through clicking on my link below this video. And Audible is another another one of those things I truly believe in. I think that uh, you know, especially for someone who spends a lot of time on the road, you can do a lot of productive things at that time. Which you know, it used to kill me when I had to drive all all over the place for meetings. When I had so much productivity that I wanted to be focusing on and I felt like just traveling around was just wasting my time. You know, if you are on the road a lot, if you commute a lot, if you have long distance travels, uh, you know, whether you want to listen to audiobooks for entertainment or, you know, development of business concepts or self-development, audible.com is an amazing resource and a great way to spend that road trip time. So you guys take care, be safe, chase that adventure, kindness and wellness in your life. And we'll catch you on the flip side. This is another reason why I'm going to Palm Springs. They got 350 days a year of sunshine. This is not a common thing out there.